China's whole economy is on the verge of collapsing, triggering the world's greatest recession. China's recent economic statistics have revealed the country's major weaknesses. The Communist Party of China is attempting to preserve the economy, but the truth has already surfaced. Kathy Wood oversees nearly $20 billion and has swiftly sensed the world's impending economic problems. For the first time in over five decades, economists forecast the United States' GDP growth topping that of China. So, what's the true story in China? This video will explain China's conflict scenario as well as the alarming facts pointing to the country's impending economic collapse. China's economy began to open up in 1978, and the country enjoyed tremendous growth. China's annual GDP growth averaged 10%. The Chinese people reaped significant benefits as a result of this. Over 800 million individuals have been lifted out of poverty. Healthcare has vastly improved, education has become a priority, and technological advancement has increased. China's unmatched growth has transformed the country into a manufacturing powerhouse revered by economists throughout the world. But as you are well aware, nothing is ever free. The growth of China's liabilities was the driving force behind the country's unprecedented prosperity. Those that took out loans saw their net worth increase quickly when the economy was booming. This encouraged others to follow suit, causing the economy to accelerate even further. As a result, more Chinese people are taking out loans. The cycle acted as a positive feedback loop, causing China's growth to be exponential. This paradigm has worked for decades, but China's debt has reached a sustainable point. China's government debt-to-GDP ratio has risen to more than 66% as a result of decades of rapid growth. The entire public debt in China has risen to above 300% of GDP as a result of this trend. This is about 60% higher than the global debt-to-GDP ratio and nearly double the non-financial corporation debt-to-GDP ratio in the United States. Such a massive quantity of debt is clearly sustainable, as China's recent problems demonstrate. China is seeking to implement the so-called zero-COVID policy. The zero-COVID policy sets a straightforward goal for China's government, zero-COVID cases. The only way to come close to achieving this goal is to impose stringent laws with serious economic consequences. Due to tight COVID laws, banks and economists throughout the world have consistently lowered their GDP forecasts for China. More crucially, China's assault on over-leveraged firms may instigate the polar opposite of the positive feedback loop we discussed earlier, a negative feedback loop. The economy slows as a result of people defaulting on their loans. More people default as a result, slowing the economy even more. President Xi has a basic goal of promoting common prosperity and has been enacting a slew of legislation to that end. Real estate is one of these industries. The price of real estate is the acme of unusual wealth. Rising property prices have resulted in a disproportionate percentage of capital appreciation for speculators. Xi is trying to put a stop to it by enacting additional property levies. The Three Red Lines policy is another policy that Xi has been pushing to crack down on in the real estate industry. The Three Red Lines set a limit to how much debt real estate developers can take on. All of these initiatives have resulted in a rapid decline in home prices. The number of new house sales is likewise on the decline. In 23 major Chinese cities, new home sales were down 33% in early May 2022. China's GDP is 25% made up of real estate. As a result, a 33% decline in home sales would result in a 9% loss in China's GDP. The Chinese government knows the economy's oncoming tragedy and is doing everything it can to prevent it from worsening. While the U.S. Federal Reserve raises interest rates, China's government lowers interest rates in order to safeguard its economy. The prime rate for both family and corporate loans in China is now 3.7%. With time, this number is only anticipated to decrease further. The country's five-year loan prime rate was recently slashed by the most since 2019. Most investors regard this financial crisis as a one-off occurrence that will have little bearing on other countries. Contrary to popular belief, China's economic collapse might plunge the entire world into a recession. The Federal Reserve of the United States is rising interest rates, boosting the dollar's purchasing power. 
This has a direct impact on the Chinese yuan's value against the U.S. dollar. China's currency is falling, causing its purchasing power to plummet at a time when the Chinese economy is already collapsing. In an interview, Kathy Wood is quoted in saying, "The Fed is really focused on the U.S., but I think Europe is in a recession. China, some of the numbers are coming out of China, are shocking as well. That has an impact on the rest of Asia. So." What they're facing is a recession, and their currencies are dropping. Their currencies are dropping relative to the dollar, which means their purchasing power is going down. But it also means that some of them are tightening more because their currencies are falling against the dollar. So it's a bit of a vicious cycle. We're not alone. Many people are thinking about the U.S. in isolation. We've already had a one quarter of negative GDP, which most people brushed aside, saying, "Oh, that's a fluke." I think it was a real number, and we should not dismiss it. End quote. In 2021, China accounted for more than 18 percent of global GDP. As a result, if China's economy suddenly collapsed, it would cause global weakening. When you add in the reality that Europe's economy is slowing down, it's evident that we are all in a dangerous situation. Kathy compared rising interest rates by the Federal Reserve to playing with fire. Because it could intensify intentional crises, for the first time since 2019, the U.S. bond curve inverted, signaling the possibility of a recession. When the yield on a 10-year Treasury bond is lower than the yield on a two-year Treasury bond, the yield curve is inverted. When the interest rate for a shorter period of time is higher than the interest rate for a longer period of time, the near-term risk is higher than the long-term risk. Bond investors. To put it another way, are anticipating a lot of pain. Most of the time, an inverted yield curve precedes a recession. International economies are incredibly fragile right now, and a crash in the United States economy will spiral every other economy into unbearable turmoil. Kathy Wood elaborates on this by saying, "Quote: Europe's probably in recession. China is, if we are looking at the micro numbers. China's very weak, very, very weak." And so everyone's riding on the U.S. So the supply shocks, I think, are hurting purchasing powers. I said in the U.S. could cause a recession that will unwind the supply chain bottlenecks pretty quickly. And I think a lot of what we're seeing right now is a function of supply chain and supply shocks, very cyclical as well. And I think we'll see the other side of that. End quote. The most recent global recession occurred in 2008, when a wide range of countries encountered economic difficulties. The 2008 recession, on the other hand, was not on the same size as our looming disaster. During the worldwide recession of 2008, China's GDP was still increasing in double digits. The economies of the remainder of Asia, Australia, and Africa did not suffer significant declines. In contrast to 2008, the bulk of Asia, Europe. South Africa, Australia, and America are now in distress. I've displayed a lot of graphs on China's economy, but those data could be inaccurate. China has a reputation for fabricating economic data to hide economic disasters and inflate growth. Several cities in China have admitted to falsifying economic figures. Baotou, a northern industrial city in China, has publicly altered its economic report owing to fake additions. Another city, dubbed the Chinese Manhattan, inflated its revenue by 33 percent in 2016. This type of misinformation could indicate that China is already in a recession, but we aren't aware of it. Kathy feels that if we saw the real data in China, the property sector would see even more huge sales drops. In the medium term, she believes this will lead to reduced oil prices. In light of this, Kathy said, "Quote." I'm beginning to think that substitution, as well as a recession in Europe, a significant slowdown in China. I think if we saw the real numbers there, we'd probably be seeing more declines, given how much they've hit the property sector and are bearing down on the economy generally from a regulatory point of view. So we think that demand is falling, and would not be surprised at the end of the day to learn that 130 was the peak. Of course, anything's possible now, given the kind of shocks we've been through. End quote. So, with all of this knowledge, how can investors prepare their portfolios to weather the storm? Holding cash is a straightforward method to keep afloat, but inflation will chip away at your savings. 
International investing is likewise not a possibility, with Asia and Europe both hurting. Investing in the U.S. market is one method to protect your wealth in the coming months, although it may seem contradictory. The U.S. financial markets are still in the best shape relative to the rest of the world. Despite the fact that the U.S. dollar is undergoing substantial inflation, it is nevertheless holding its value. The dollar index measures the dollar's strength against other currencies. Despite massive inflation, this indicator has been on the rise for the past year. Although a big slowdown in inflation could cause gold prices to fall, investing in gold could be a great hedge. Every asset, in my opinion, has drawbacks. Diversification in the best assets would be the best solution for minimizing volatility while maintaining positive returns in this scenario. 25% in cash, 5% in gold, 5% in Bitcoin, 40% in ETFs, and 25% in individual stocks may be an example of diversity. While such a portfolio might not produce the highest returns, it can provide you with the funds to buy the dip while generating long-term gains. Kathy believes that, quote, The dollar is moving up, and I do believe there is a terms of trade reason for it. China has become more hostile to capital. Europe is in recession and on the border of war, and the U.S. just seems like a safer place to be right now. End quote. Investing in public growth stocks could be quite profitable if you're willing to take on more risk in exchange for greater rewards. We're all aware that public growth stocks have plummeted, with ARK Invest in the focus of the attention. This has created a plethora of potential for 10 times or even 20 times returns in the coming years. Public growth stocks are extremely volatile, so invest only if you're willing to see your portfolio fall in value in the short term. Having said that, I have seen a number of billionaires alter their minds about growth stocks and start buying them. What do you think? Let me know what you think about China's impending recession down below. Do you think that the US will be hit alongside China? If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.